we have a full blown search out right now for Momo's arrest, and she pops up at a military compound, Holy shit. and nobody knows who the hell she so is. So you know what's funny? Uh, I don't know why they don't know. That is stupid. Again, five <laughs> episodes. Is, uh, it's, uh, that's the excuses I'm giving this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Girl Otaku Council podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ace. And I'm your host, McMillian. And we are back, but not for a regular weekly episode this time. We are back with another special episode with our series review of the Netflix anime Vampire in the Garden. Is it better than the Bubble movie? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> but as always, if you'd like to become a council member and join me and me and McMillian as we discuss all things anime and sometimes manga, then make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as well as follow us on our social media so you can stay up to date on all things about the council. And with that being said, the council is now in session. Let the meeting begin. begin. All right, everybody. Hello, welcome back. Um, as I said, in, as we said in episode twenty-seven, today's episode will not be a weekly episode. We'll be doing a special episode with special episode number nine mm-hmm. with our series review of the Netflix anime Vampire in the Garden. This movie was also produced by Wit Studio, which was which was the same studio that also produced the um, Bubble okay. Movie review, which was our last special episode that we did a movie review of. And we're gonna see if this series is better than the Bubble movies. Let's, you know, we're gonna see how they handle this one compared to Bubble. Yeah, come, I, so well, we know it's wit. So at least you know it looks good. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Hey, it has that going for it. I'm with you on that, Mel. You know it. It looks good. Wit. I will say that wit always does some good animation. Mm-hmm. So that, that that's one thing. So I guess before we get down into it i'm we're gonna we're gonna do our series review a little bit different um this time also this is basically kind of the format we're going to be doing from now on for our movie reviews a little bit but we're subject to change so we're going to be started we're going to talk about the setting of the series then we're going to go to the plot then we're going to talk about some characters of the series as well like our send out characters and then we'll end it off with our general questions and opinions that we have for this series Mm -hmm. um but before we start with that um mcmillian um with Oh, damn, I forgot the question I was just finna ask you. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, we are, this is uh, going to be spoilers in it. So if you have not watched this series, uh, Thank you. either make, like, I guess your decision on whether you want to watch this beforehand or after. Um, Correct. If you watch it beforehand, you'll get some insight, I guess, on basically what the fuck is going on with this show. <laughs> and if you watch it after... You might have some of the same opinions or different ones, which if you do, let us know, please. Damn, I was going to ask you a question before we got started up, but I I can't remember what it was just that fast. Uh, I really can't. I mean, hopefully it'll come back to you. Hopefully hopefully it will, but it it was meant to be asked before we started, but but that's fine. I I forgot it. I I don't know how I forgot it just that fast, (laughs) but it's okay. So we'll go, like McBillian said, this will be a spoiler review. So if you have not yet watched the series, um, you know, pause this video, go go watch it. Or if you don't care, um, then by all means, you know, you are here to stay and enjoy this episode. But um, yeah, so we're just going to hop into it, starting off with the setting of the story of Vampire and, and not the story of the anime Vampire and Garden. So um, our story takes place here in a Arctic region, if you will, um, somewhere in the king where, where Aurora Borealis can appear. So I'm we don't get a confirmation of this, but places where that where that can happen is places like Sweden, Finland, Norway, Russia, Canada, as well as um Alaska. Um, yeah. they did mention in one area that there was like some Arctic regions and stuff like that, so they could be in an, in Alaska as well. Um, or that, or the know, Antarctic, I guess. Right. Yeah, or the Antarctic as well. Um, is also they're in like a war riddled world well, yeah. as well because due to the war that they had with between the humans and vampires most of the buildings have been destroyed and stuff like that there's a lot of waste air, uh, in the all around the environment and stuff like that as well like the rivers and you know polluted and stuff like that so the um the 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 environment in the world the city and stuff they have been riddled with war and stuff like that as well so yeah, and um that's basically the setting of the story so how you know what did you think of the setting mcmillian Ah, the overall setting wasn't, I guess, too interesting. Other because it didn't, in my opinion, it didn't play a lot into the story. 
Like, they didn't do a lot to make the setting a part of the story, other than, like, I guess, for some environmental yeah. obstacles. But, like, they, when we got, when, and this could be a plight of the fact that it's only five episodes, but, like, when we got to, like, outside, because there's a main wor- hub world, like, well, not hub world, but, like, hub city for humans mm-hmm. that's, like, this giant iron fortress with, like, uh, sh- well, not strobe lights, but, like, uh, Spotlights all over Spotlights, it, yes. uh, for defense against vampires. And uh, when we finally leave there, there's no like explanation or thing history we get in regarding any of the other towns or little, uh, yeah, little cities or towns that we end up going to or like other like little stints of places that we really get. So it's not yeah. the setting isn't really a character. I feel like too much within the movie, which. In a way, uh, to me, well, not in a movie, but in the series, in a way, it feels like a missed opportunity as well because I feel like this is a po- post-apocalyptic type of world. I feel like, you know, the intrigue of basically what led for that happening is a part of it, but they kind of just like slap yeah. the war label on it and call it a day. So. <laughs> yeah, call it a day. That's exactly what they did. Um, I was just about to say, because do you think the series probably would have been better off on like more of a, like a urban city style type of setting compared to this Arctic vibe that they had going on? I Partially, I think uh, the Arctic vibe kind of helps serve the fact of like why vampires and humans can't necessarily be out fighting all the time. Um, because humans are reliant on like heat and vampires don't necessarily have to worry about the cold. So they're like, I think it's a way for them to show besides just like, because you know, if it wasn't for that, It'd be much easier for them to fight them because the, they got, they got the daytime already on their side. You tell yeah. me, and then the terrain ain't really you know difficult for them. But like with the snow and everything, if you're not a vampire, with if you're not a vampire, you're 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 susceptible to dying from ammonia, uh, catching a cold in general, and just yeah. being like out for weeks, as well as just like uh, the fact that in this movie and in, in this series. Vampires. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just used to us doing this with movies, not necessarily series. It's been a while since we've done a series review, you know? So, uh, in in this series, vampires have the ability of flight. And that also, I feel like, de- delves into like the fact that, like, oh, the snowy region makes it hard to move and traverse. So, unless you've got the upper hand, such as, like, in the first episode with that, like, when they were in that mall, I think? Yeah. Uh, Something like that. that like, wait, they, no. Oh no, they they weren't in a the mall. They was in like they was in some castle. Was it a castle? Was it a mall? I don't know yeah, why like I remember. I don't know why I remember like glass and stairs and shit. Um, I mean there were stairs and shit, yeah. But I'm saying like glass. It didn't seem like medieval. Like it didn't seem like a medieval castle. It seemed like a modern yeah. type of building. Uh, so I just said mall. But uh, they were in a building, and in there they had like the upper hand on the on the vampires that they fought. Right, like they they weren't dealing with a snowy terrain. They weren't dealing with difficult terrain. Um. They had the opportunity to fight as equally, I guess, as they could. <laughs> um, but I will say that it, it, while the terrain isn't necessarily a character within this movie, it is there. It, it, there is some like I think it at least is like, hey, this is why humanity is kind of on like the not losing side, but some of the not advan like they're they're disadvantage because they yeah. their enemy. Uh, is adv- in an advantage position because the sun is the fact that they're in like eternal, almost eternal winter. It seems like the sun is blocked out a lot, so that's one thing. And then two, you, humans aren't necessarily equipped to really deal with snowy terrain naturally. Like our bodies yeah, aren't yeah, not at all, right? Yeah. So yeah, so no, I feel you come from that. From that, like you said, of course, you know, in the daytime, the humans will always have the advantage uh-huh. you know, when dealing with vampires because that's just how normally dealing with vampires work. And then, you know, of course, they always have the, the vampires on the other hand, always have the advantage of nighttime. That is always just how that dynamic between humans and vampires normally work. Um, but I do feel where you're coming from with how even though the city didn't really play too much of a major place in like the I guess the story in a sense. But like you said, in when you think about it and stuff like yeah, that, it, it, it does play. It just shows somewhat yeah, of a role. It just shows that like this. These are the reason like the world being this ice type of like like state. Like this snowy mm-hmm. state is one of the reasons why, like the they they seem to be at a stalemate. Because even though like humans have this technology, like have the UV light technology that can weaken them and have guns, they don't have their they they the the fact that like it's snowing all it's 
like ridiculously cold all the time puts all people the time. puts them at a huge disadvantage because that's like the terrain is hard to fight in and all the other reasons I said before. Like uh it just help I, I it, uh it just helps I think like answer some of the small questions on terms of like, you know, why aren't humans dominating the vampires or why are the vampires not fully dominating the humans, you know? The humans, yeah, of course, yeah. Not for you. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that's that's no, that's the sin <laughs> of the series here. Um, me personally, I don't, I don't know how if I quite agree with the setting overall because one, I mean, they just really they didn't tell us where the hell they was at in general. We just left to assumptions at this point. Mm-hmm. But I do think overall that it would have did better with more of a utopia style type of setting, in my opinion. But like you said, but then if we if they do it that way. They're more so prone to always fighting at the same time, but who's? I mean, who says that's I mean, not necessarily a good thing, though? Yeah, because I, I mean, like, what? Uh, it would have been interesting because vampires aren't instant killed when they get in the sunlight; they're weakened Correct. more so um, from sun, and they could potentially kill. Like that offset enough is enough to like be able to kill them. Um, but it would have been made for an. I feel like an interesting or like that a more interesting battle, but. The thing is, I, uh, the snow also would have made for more interesting. Look, if you're five, yeah. it, it, with five episodes, you're limited, I think, either way. I mean, yeah, but, and then also the reason why I say that is well, it probably would have dealt better with a utopia type setting. Because, you know, one of the, you know, we'll get to this later, but one of the main things they were trying to do was get to, you know, Eden, if you will. And I feel like, you know, once they set off on that adventure to go find Eden, they, okay, now we're leaving the city and stuff. We're heading out into the wild, into the unknown to go find Eden and whatever else is out there. So, do you feel like it would have been better for them to start in a utopia, or yes, like not necessarily a utopia, just a urban city style place? Oh, I, I okay. I accidentally, I accidentally said utopia. Yes. Okay, cool. Because um, I was because that confused me. Because I was like, why would they go search for Eden? Yeah, if they <laughs> Eden. Eden. Uh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So, a, a more urban setting. Yeah, I mean that probably would have helped out a bit. I feel like with like making the setting a like. Uh, a part of the story more so because urban, you know, when you're in a city that uh, mm-hmm. a city like cities had their own type of landscape, even regardless of like the weather. So yeah, because like because you know it also brings back the point where you're saying that you know humans don't have the really the advantage in the cold and with just this terrain in general that would have played more of an effect it effect in the story if they left you know their city like area to go out into the wild. Now the actual the terrain you know in the cold it start will start to play more of a bigger role inside the story because you know we're not used to this we're used to being held up in our city safe and sound you know not in the wilderness I can see it. No, no i can see i can definitely i definitely compared to them already living in that environment i definitely you know I, I definitely uh think that could have played a part into it i mean um yeah because yeah they definitely could have like separated i think a little bit of like uh those short more of the human struggle of it because a lot of this is like it, the struggle between humans and vampires, but it doesn't. It's weird the way it's like portrayed. It's like almost like okay, humans have enough technological advancements to do all this, but not enough to wipe them out. Which I think, yeah. you if you think about the setting enough, you could technically see why. But with your thing, that would have played even more so of a role, like because they were been used to not going out of the city too much. Yes. You know, too much. Yeah. Like, of course they probably will go out every now and then on expeditions and stuff like that, to, you know, destroy, you know, vampire encampments and stuff like that, which they technically did in this story still anyways. But I think, like you said, it would have, it, uh, it would have played a bigger role because we're not used to the environment. So we got to be a little bit more extra careful when we do leave the city and stuff Yeah, compared to where we're, we're living in this environment already. And so it really does like, it still matters, but not as much. No, no, no. I, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But okay, but that that was the setting, so we're going to move on to the plot of the story. And <laughs> I will say, at least with this plot, I was able to follow along with this a little bit easier than the, the bubble plot, if you will. Again, the but, bubble movie, as far as I'm concerned, has no plot. But go watch, our, <laughs> go watch the movie review to see why I say that. But I'm going to let Mimillion give you guys the rundown of the plot of the series. Um, yeah, so uh, Vampire in the Garden. For some reason, every time I say vampire, I want to say diaries, but <laughs> that's because of America. <laughs> um, so Vampire in the Garden focuses on this young girl named Momo, who basically uh, has a hard time trying to figure out, I guess, like her place in uh, the world slash society, if you will. Uh, she is an enlisted soldier, but she seems to be 
not the soldier type, basically. She doesn't seem like she's cut out for being a soldier. Like, the first time we even see her, she it's almost she almost gets taken out by a vampire, uh, lo and behold. Uh, so, uh, it, in the world, like, Momo basically dreams, basically, of coexist of a, hopefully a future coexistence between, like, humans and vampires. But that does not seem the case, because most humans just see vampires as mindless monsters to be slaughtered. And vampires see humans as animals to be slaughtered. I mean, the, the parallelism is there. Uh, so she, um, basically, it, 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 after a couple of events, it, uh, she meets, basically, the woman known as Fine, who is the queen of vampires, who uh, doesn't wish for the to engage in the conflict with humans anymore. Like, she has other, va- other vampires fight uh, not necessarily on her behalf, ju- they just still worship her as their queen. Um, and that's due to the fact that Fine has a history with humans and where she wished to, where she also kind of wishes to find peace. Momo and her, after a couple of events, meet, um, and decide to go and find Eden, uh, this place, this supposed to be this place of peaceful coexistence between vampires, uh, together. Um, and through, their adventures, I want to say they both learn about each other's world more, but it's more so Momo finding out how good and shitty vampires can be overall. Um, yeah, I, I don't, um, <laughs> I really don't know if there's anything else to say other than that. Um, no, I'm, no, that's it. That's it right there. Um, I guess, why, you know, why did you bring that up? Um, one of the main things that I feel that was kind of off-putting about that little situation right there. You necessarily Momo going with Fine. So, like, we we don't really get to see much of Momo's younger past life, if you will. So we don't know necessarily how her childhood was. But you know, when we first got introduced to her, we know that she was a you know she was a soldier, and she, apparently she was a good soldier because when she was in um, training or whatnot, she used to, she always got high marks on her trainings and stuff like that. So she at least knew what she was doing felt, to some extent. I felt two different ways about that. Cause I was like, uh, w- uh one thing Momo, uh, this isn't necessarily, well, this relates to the plot, but it doesn't really play a big a role as I, as I feel like it should. Momo's the daughter of the head of like the whole human. Yes. Army. I don't even, I want to say operation. Cause technically it just seems like the military runs everything in this world. Yeah. She's the general. Um, yeah. So, uh, that could also be the, her getting high marks could also be the fact that like her mom, they didn't want to fail her. Could have been, <laughs> yeah. There's, but there's always but I case. mean, she could. But also, book smarts does not necessarily translate to you know actual doing of the action. So, because eh. I was only saying that because Momo, like I said before, does not seem like she was cut out to be a soldier. But you yeah. continue. And, and then you know, with her, basically, how they meet up is the vampires start. A big assault on the human um, uh, fortress, city, if yeah. you will, the, the fortress, if you will, and it starts going the vampires' ways. Push come to shove, a lot of stuff starts going bad. They get inside the city, and at one point, Momo starts running away because her mother caught her with this music uh, box that uh-huh. she found when and she was on her expedition to go kill some vampires. And music is vetoed in their world because. It attracts vampires. Vampire, yeah, va- so vampires have acute hearing, and yeah. music. Uh, so music uh, is a it, it, like it's like a marker for like oh there's prey there or like there's stuff here, and they also cool. enjoy. Also, apparently, vampires really enjoy music. Like they made that very apparent. They were like very vampires cool. yeah. love music. <laughs> I don't. Um, and it kind of that also only somewhat plays into the. Well, we'll get to that. Go yeah, ahead. but yeah, so they and there's there's an encounter where where yeah after she catches Momo with his music box and she basically roasts up Momo a little bit and she was like you know what are you doing this is taboo you know you're the general's daughter and Momo's just basically like you know I had enough of this shit and she, I'm leaving yeah. now we haven't seen much you know from Momo's past life just to sit here and say was this her little flip out was, you know, necessary because we, we don't know what she's been through at all. We just, well, we, did, we just saw this one encounter with her mother and she's just like, fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> well, you can, um, <laughs> I mean, you can guess based on how the characters act, uh, that this is not like the first time. Well, this, well, I don't want to say this is not the first time that she caught up with music, but at least we can tell that Momo's life has not been easy being the general's daughter, honestly. Correct. So I can surmise that that outburst 
was either A, over the top, or B, warranted. Because she did what, what slap else, the but, shit out of her. Like, <laughs> yes, and, and what else also throws it off, you know, like, we're, we're the, the city is being under the tech, un, we're mid under attack right now, right? We're mid under tech, vampires everywhere, bullets being slung everywhere. You are legit being attacked by another vampire at this moment, and your thought process is going, I need to go with this other vampire that, even though she did just try to save your life, but you almost just at the same time died by after, another one. Yeah, after she let me go with this other vampire that tried to save yeah, my life. She you know, is, I don't know nothing about uh, her, though. Yeah, after she escaped and everything. It's very weird. It, like, granted, um, Momo. Because, like I said, a lot of the I feel like a lot of the stuff that happens in the show is because it's only five episodes. Because like the first two have a decent through line. Like you get, um, you get to see like why the vampires are doing what they're doing, why the humans are doing what they're doing, kind of get like the setup to all that. And then yeah. uh, as the show continues, like certain things just kind of get like rushed, and yeah. it it it's not. Bad, but it's like this is not conducive to storytelling. I guess basically what I'm what I'm trying to say is I wanted more of a build up to or more yeah, of a no, reason for, for Momo for to fucking leave and the one with instance. The oh, oh no, and I agree. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to explain like the reason why it happened so fast is because of that. Um, and that's basically generally the plot is like it is that it's like every episode. Generally, it's like, oh, this is why we're together, and this is why we keep needing needing to be on the run. It's because we want to establish a world like this. We want to establish, make sure like this is good. Like that, both Momo and Fine bond over their like love for music, and like the reason Momo even decides to travel with Fine. Like she's skeptical at first, but her skepticism ends by like the second episode, like the beginning <laughs> of the second episode. Some could arguably even say by the end of the first, but uh, like it. it, it like throughout the series, she's being chased. Momo's being chased by her uncle, who is uh, who's like this. I, I guess maybe the best or one of the best vampire hunters in the organization, and uh, <laughs> they constantly have to basically escape, enjoy a life for a little bit, escape chaos. You, yes. it's, it's, that's that's generally like the plot is like them yes. trying to survive. Against all odds, against in this all odds, yeah. crazy so, fucking yeah. world. They're being hunted by the the humans, by the general, because you know she's sending people out to find her daughter, as well as due to Fine being the vampire queen, the council of vampires or the the elders, how they called them, sent um, this other vampire dude named Allegro out to go find Fine and you know bring her back because she's the fucking queen. We can't have the queen mm-hmm. away from her throne. So got to bring the queen back home. So they're running not only away from vampires and. And, and vampires, but also humans. It's a uh, very Correct. much like a Romeo and Juliet type of situation where nobody fucks with people. like the side. The families don't fuck with each other, so <laughs> it, it just causes a whole bunch of shit. But th- this time on a like species scale, if you will. Correct. <laughs> um. But yeah, but that's the that's the general plot of the series, and now we're gonna talk about some of our favorite characters, if you will. And uh, one of my favorite characters was. I didn't know his name until we went and looked up some stuff because I don't think they ever said it. But the guy's name is Kubo, which is Momo's uncle slash her mother's brother. Um, he's just a Sasuke looking ass motherfucker going around with a sword fighting vampires. That, 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 that is accurate. <laughs> and he's, he's basically the, the badass of the vampire what, in the garden verse, if you will. What's so funny about it is, as we all know, anime has its lovely tropes. Uh, this character, and it, this is a world that has guns, fully functioning guns. It's not even like bad ones, like M sixteen, like automatics, automatics and, and eventually get mechs in this goddamn yes. shit. I don't know how the fuck <laughs> that happened. Um, but he he has a sword. <laughs> it shows up. All he has is a sword. So you automatically know this dude when you see him. Oh, this is the badass of the show, right? The, the, basically, how they introduce this guy is. Um, so bas- there's there's this drug that the vampires use. When they use it, they go into this crazed state. They their body change. They get all big and they basically turn into a monster. Mm-hmm. And basically, that happened after some time where the vampires was you know invading the city. This is towards the end of the raid. Um, this one of the vampires decided to inject themselves with the drugs. They went on a little small rampage, but then lo and behold, they ended up running running up on Kubo, and you just see this man pull his sword out all quick and smooth, slice his ass up, 
and then cut his head off. And I'm like, okay, yep. who's it? Who's this badass right here? This, this, this what who this who the anime need about right here? This who, this who it needs to be about? Um, this guy, whoever this guy is. Yeah, no, that uh, they, that's basically how they do it. He is the Juan Don of Vampire Diary. Uh, <laughs> And he, his backstory is also kind of interesting too, because uh, he's a foil that we don't learn until I'm, until I'm glad the you fourth that episode. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, we don't learn about this shit until the last episode, and they just bring this shit out of nowhere. Yeah, it was like the fourth or like, fifth episode. Yeah, that you basically it was the it was the fifth episode. The fifth? The last okay, episode. I just remember it was like around the end. Um, yeah, and he and what's crazy is like he's a foil. Uh, he's like the exact opposite of Fine because Fine had a love interest as a human that was granted. The, uh, that it was basically forbidden for her to have, and it was somewhat like a love interest slash mother figure in a way, um, how it was portrayed, and uh, she ended up getting killed, and uh, Fine, uh, Momo's uncle Kubo had, was, uh, was naive when he was younger, and basically married a vampire, and eventually he had to kill his wife because she went on uh, Crazy a rage. Because vampires in this universe, if they don't drink blood enough they go crazy. they'll go crazy oh uh, and so it, it, it what sucks is because he could have been a main character on like well could have been the main character honestly because they, and they just the and they just threw that shit in there in the last episode, episode which i was like, like where did this even come this from? was like, important information and why is it coming like legit now? they, they could have they could have they could have spoon fed that to us at the end of episode three or episode two where they um where they kicked him out of that big castle, they could have spoon fed that to us then. Mm-hmm. You no, know, like well, drip fed it rather than that. It's spoon fed. Yeah, it, like showed us little small hints or whatever. But yeah, it could have been the whole thing. So um, they just brought this shit out of nowhere. Yeah, they, no, Kubo's that, that did piss me off. But Kubo's a cool character. I do uh, think that this anime does have like nice uh, characters. It's just the way we get to learn about them is probably the most infuriating <laughs> thing because it's again five episode anime. Um, so I. While they aren't my favorite, I really do like uh, Momo and Fine. I think they do a good job of, and and you know, props to the director uh, for being like, I only have five episodes to work with, but fleshing out the main characters enough for me to like them, understand where they're coming from, and then care about like their journey, right? Um, they're not necessarily my favorite, only because I feel like we don't get enough of them. Um, not at all. Uh, but my favorite character in the same way, we don't get, we, we get just the right amount of. Uh, there's, uh, so at a point in the show, um, that fourth episode, actually, I don't even know, I'm acting like I don't know. In the fourth episode, they find Eden, or get saved by Eden. Um, and they meet this, uh, vampire girl who's kind of like the, what would you call it, like the, if you've ever taken a college tour, the, the person who greets you on campus and tour gives guide, you the tour guide, yeah. Um, I was, I always feel like there's a better word for it, but yeah, she's basically yeah. what she is. Um, she seems to be somewhat also important within the community of Eden, but she basically gives Fine and Momo the tour. Her name is, I believe it is Eliza. My mouse. Oh, yeah, Eliza. There's my mouse. Sorry, I couldn't find my... Yeah, Eliza. Oh, no, Alicia. 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 Excuse me, yes. Alicia. Uh, her name is Alicia. Um, She is... First, she's a young vampire, so like same age as Momo, which brings the question: Can vampires have sex? Because why? It, it, or was she oh, trying nah. as a ch- well? I mean, like reproduce through intercourse, I guess. Um, not can they have sex? Because uh, <laughs> she's the same age as Momo, and it's not clear if she was bitten in turn or if she was, you know, brought about through natural Born means. Vampire, yeah. yeah. Uh, it also begs the question, can vampires grow after they've been bit? Because that's also something they don't talk about. We don't get enough lore, really, honestly. Um, but no. Alicia leads them around, you know, introduces them to Eden, and then eventually, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, Eden is not what it's cracked up to be. Shocker, I know. And Alicia turns tail on, basically, uh, backstabs Momo, uh, Metaphorically and physically, <laughs> <laughs> and it reveals herself to be this just crazy uh, vampire. Who's just like, hey, some people got to die for this shit to work. You about to be one of them. <laughs> your friend about I mean, to your friend about to be one of them too. It I, is what it is. I honestly love 
that character because it was just like I, you know what, I appreciate this chaos in this middle of this five episode anime. Let's do it. Yeah, no, I feel you because she at first she was she she also did mention that you know, we could have lived together forever and all. Yeah, that. she was like we could have lived but, together peacefully. But now you got you got to also, go. Also, she mean. has uh, my favorite line in this anime, which is uh, "We'll be together for the rest of your life" because it's about to be short. And I was like. <laughs> Hey, yo, that's a hard ass line. Man. I must have missed it. She said, um, if you, it's so hard. Like, again, the last, when I tell you the last episode of this hey, shit, the, the last yeah, that two line episodes. T- that line tough as fuck, though. The last two episodes of this shit goes by so fast. So I don't blame you for not recognizing it. It's, I, I, I almost, I, I was at catch. I had to scrub through four and five before we recorded. Um, just to, like, make sure I was remembering everything. And. Uh, she says it like I think right before she gets hit with that, uh, right before Momo shoots her, jumps that, yeah, yeah, and drops the thing on her, which we'll get to later because I have something to say about that shit. <laughs> but um, hey, yo, put that shit on the shirt, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> um, but she she's great, and it's it, it's a travesty that we only get her for two, for two episodes, I think, maybe yeah, two episodes, like well, no, an episode and a half, really, but yeah. uh. Yeah, that's probably my favorite character. All the yeah. other characters, um, I want to say, they're do, not really stand out. Yeah, they're they're not more really just favorite characters. Other than yeah, besides the main characters, they're not really just stand out. Like uh, Momo's mom, who I feel like should play a big thing, is like her biggest thing is just like, uh, it, her biggest thing is she seems to care more about her job than her child. But that's kind of obvious, yeah. um, by like the first episode. And they don't really do too much. I feel like they don't give her enough for her to really have much effect on Good. the story. Yeah. Like, aesthetically, all I we agree. know is that she's commanding her brother to go find her daughter, which but, isn't yeah. that much, you know? It was at all. And um, um uh, uh, with Allegro, while I also like him, the issue with him is is that he's one note. As he's saying same thing with Momo's mom. Um he lo- he loves or admires Fine. Based on uh, uh, the fact that like he proposed to her like when they were kids, so it's not even like you know they, they didn't really even understand what love was. But he does yeah. care about her, and his whole obsession thing when it's not fighting humans is her. And it's basically it's her, he's yeah. he's a driving force for the vampires to find Momo and Fine. Is right, um, and then you know uh, uh, also about that we we don't they didn't confirm like if their wedding was due to like an arranged marriage or. Did Fine accept this, you know, marriage like at one time? Like, did she did she really have feelings for him at one point, or did you know did they fall off for at whatever reason for at another time point in time? But they never explained that. Or shit, we don't even know if this happened before or after the situation where Fine, you know, fell in love with the human and she ended up uh, Arya and she ended up dying. Mm-hmm. We don't know exactly. Um, I assume. Well, we'll get about to say I can't even assume because. It looked like she was more that around that same age at the same time where she fell in love with Arya is at the same time as when she got proposed to from Allegro as well. Mm-hmm. So we don't know which one of the events happened first yep. at all, um, because it could I can because I can see it going to where after Fine been through what she did, you know, been through Allegro comes and you know proposes to her and stuff like that. I can see that happening, but but the way it look, uh, well in the last episode they have like a little flashback thing when Allegro was. Uh... I don't know if he was dying or after he got hurt, but uh, basically... No, he was dying. That man was dying. Okay, well, yeah. Basically, it seemed like he proposed to her before she met uh, Arya. I mean, that's what it seems like, but we just we, uh, don't ten, necessarily know. In five episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so... But yeah. Yeah. So ma- mainly, there was really only five standout characters. Um, As we know, Fine and Momo, of course, they are our two protagonists. Uh, Momo does Kubo and then the general, which is Momo's mother. Those really are five standout characters. That Momo does have a friend in the beginning of the show, but that friend uh, served a purpose, uh, and you can kind of guess what that purpose is. Well, okay, well, no, you know what? I I mean, like she was kind of. I mean, like it's uh, she was only in one episode. She was kind of a decent character. But, no, well, I was about to say because it makes me think about what I was saying that Mobile necessarily didn't have enough reason to go with Fina at first, but Fina did try to save her friend, so that also could have played in. Oh, well, that, that, that is true. Go leave. That is true. With that, she felt comfortable enough to leave with um, Fina. Yeah. Um. That. I mean, that's that's another. That is another. I feel like part of like what led her to trusting her. 
Um, but that, that's really only what that character served a purpose for, unfortunately. <laughs> I feel so <laughs> fucked unfortunately. up. I feel so fucked up saying that, but that is legitimately the only thing like that girl served a purpose for. And her name was Marina. I mean, her name was yeah. Her name was Marina. Um, she I, lived a short. She life, probably would live longer if this show was longer because uh, she actually, <laughs> she actually, in my opinion, for all intents and purposes, even though she like lived a short life, she wasn't a bad character. I feel like, like yeah, I feel like no, uh, you could have. They could have used a little bit more of her like relationship with Momo to just show more of uh, Momo's personality as well as just the world in general, because yeah. she was like a it, it, she was like in in between. I feel like for the humans where she um, was a soldier and she understood what her job was, but she did. You know what? But she also was like some, a good friend to Momo, and because they could have did some wild shit as when you know when Momo decided to leave and go get go with Fina and whatnot. We have my most friend here who also comes along on the hunt to go find Fine. And then now Momo has this in, internal conflict of whether this does she really you know trust her friend or trust Fine. Like what, if they meet up and stuff yeah. like that, and they ain't enough, they ain't have enough hours of time <laughs> for all that. But I would have liked, but that would have been an interesting thing, and I, I would have loved to have seen like what would have been different if they didn't only have five episodes. Like I wonder what the what the thing was that they were like five episodes for that. That's it. And then they... That's it. That's all you got. Yeah, because I, I know them writers and that director was hot. I, I'd been in that room like, what the fuck? How? Yeah. Um, so th- there, there was only five standout characters. Um, Overall, I think it, besides the general's mother, everybody else had some exposition and flesh. Well, not necessarily ex- exposition, but there was more there, to the characters yeah, they had, un- they had, underneath the surface. Beside her, there was backstory. Like Momo's mom yes. really didn't get any backstory. Yeah, she was the only person that really didn't get any backstory out of all of our standout characters. So and Alicia, unfortunate for her. And Alicia, she she got the short end of the stick. And Alicia, but Alicia was not supposed to have backstory. I don't need <laughs> if that would have ruined that would have ruined every that would have ruined she it. She wasn't for me. here for that. She was here for chaos. Yeah, she was here for and chaos. And honestly, I would have loved if this show went further. That was going to be the main antagonist. Okay. <laughs> you just you just see Alicia rise up from the pool of okay. water, stick her hands out from the ice. I'm still alive, bitch. <laughs> I'm coming for him. Uh, yeah, but oh, uh, with all that said, I guess we'll just go into general um, discussion or topics. Yes. And the first, so, or go ahead, you go, you go, you start. Yeah, I, I got, I, I got something to say. I got something to say. Yeah, so the main, like you said, we already talked about this. Main part of this story is. Both the humans and the vampires following Fina and Momo trying to get their, their respective people back to their cities because, you know, Fina is the queen of vampires and Momo is the daughter of the general of the mm-hmm. whatever you want to call their nation. We don't we, we don't they don't have a name. Um, we're just going to call them the human nation. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the general of the human nation. At one point, Fina and Momo goes to a city where there is like. There's a canal, and on both one side, it's vampires, vampires are one living, side, human. and on the other side, humans are living, uh, right? Yes. There's a point where Fine starts going crazy because she's not drinking blood. We're going to get to that later. But because she's not drinking blood and stuff like that, and Momo decides to you know, go to the military compound across the river to get some blood. Why the hell does the military people at that compound not know who Momo is? Especially since she's on the run. Oh, okay, people. I just want you to know. I just realized that they didn't know who she was. Um, we are. We have a full blown search out right now for Momo's arrest, and she pops see. up at a military compound, Holy shit. and nobody knows who the hell she so is. So you know what's funny? Uh, I don't know why they don't know. That is stupid. Again, five <laughs> episodes is uh, that's the excuses I'm giving this. Um, the thing I paid attention to during that part. How did she dodge those bullets? <laughs> Why was no one? How did? How did they told her to? Leave, they she comes up to the gate. She asks. She tells them she needs blood. They tell her to leave. They then immediately turn off the lights. I guess after they think that she's gone, and then she goes around a corner and picks a lock. Where the fuck was the guards? <laughs> you are fighting vampires. You don't think a vampire could pick a lock? Like what? Who the hell? There's a lot of like plot stuff holes, and I'm just going to contribute to the fact that they only hit. You know, they had to they had to push the story. They had five episodes. They had five yeah. episodes. They had to push the story. That is crazy though, because I did not. They didn't know who she was. That is wild. They shot at her. They shot at her. I was more surprised. I was more appalled at the fact that this woman 
who was standing still, mind you, did not get hit by an AK-47 bullet. That was the thing that took me out. But now that you point that out, they shot at the general's daughter, and they know who she thing, is. That is, I, it, I think it would have been. I think that scene would have been a lot better if she just instead of like going up to the front door, if she just would have snuck in, and as she's sneaking in, she gets caught. Like, oh shit, hey, that's Momo, get her. And then you know she starts running away, shit like that. Compared to, yeah, they should honestly. Oh, I'm going to the front door. I need some blood. Go away, motherfucker. Who are you? Like, you don't know. What do you mean? Who is this? Yeah, you know who this is? It's not. It, 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 did 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 the military not send out a memo or something? It was crazy. That could have that could have served a purpose as far as like her her being recognized. But that the fact that it didn't that was almost like a wasted scene because they could have just started with her picking the lock. Yes, uh, that's what I'm saying. But I guess it maybe just shows that Momo's character is like kind and the fact that she asked. I don't know, but it was that's interesting. That is interesting. I didn't. I was, I'm so, I was more appalled that she didn't get shot. That was the thing. <laughs> Momo, for just, uh, I was going to bring this up, but basically, I just want people to know, Momo has, like, the best plot armor of any character I've ever seen. I, there I are, told you there she, are, got, she got high marks on, on her training. There man. are, I told you she was already. standing still when the bullets were flying, and she didn't get <laughs> there, there are moments, like, I don't, I can't, I can't count them. There are so many moments that where Momo should have died. Like 10, 10 or 12 of them were the least with Alicia. They, but before I the agree. end, before the end, there was the, the, the vampire that stopped her, uh, after she left Fine. They didn't chase after her. And I was like, are y'all, y'all are starving and y'all just gonna let her walk? Yeah, I thought that was weird as well. Uh, they um, they were so upset that they didn't have blood that they burnt a fucking building down. Like and, and like and, yeah, like they and, they she came out. People like you know she did get confronted by some vampires, but they she they she got away. She just they just let her go though. Let go. They just let her go. She I'm, and I'm like y'all are starving. Y'all said y'all were starving, and y'all and instead of going after the blood, you're like maybe it's some in there. Burn this bitch down, nigga. What? <laughs> why yeah you know that that was weird what is that and then, you know what and then i got this i got this written down as one of my moments and i'm gonna and i'm gonna talk about this since you brought it up momo having plot armor there's just there's this one moment in the final episode where momo and fine starts to get cornered right and then one of the officers is like don't shoot the girl she that's the general daughter don't shoot the girl immediately after she says that somebody sends a fucking rocket launcher at her that is I true. Like, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my god! I was like, "Yo, what part of did not shoot the girl? Did you not understand?" And on top of that, not only did you shoot the girl, you decided to shoot a, a rocket. fucking rocket at her. Like, yo, this, this, like you. <laughs> if anything, you this should show you why the military is bad <laughs> in this show. Like, why they're losing? Well, well, not they're they're not losing, but like why there's been a stalemate because everybody's stupid. Um. Ooh, man! Uh, I I just thought that shit was hilarious. Yeah, I, again, plot armor, Momo Momo's greatest advantage is plot armor because Fina got her ass beat so many times in this goddamn show. <laughs> like they didn't spare any of Momo's plot armor to Fina. Like, but Fina was yeah. Um, who? What else? What else? General stuff. Uh, it, it, although uh, I, I, something I just want to contribute to the uh, people. Although you, if you're if you're not looking for spoiler heavy stuff, I guess you probably have turned off by now. But uh, this show specifically uh, has the fastest pacing after the second episode. <laughs> you will get whiplash from how fast this shit progresses after the second episode. Everything yeah. goes a goes way over a mile a minute. It is insane. You, it, it, uh, they still make it so you can follow Fine. And Momo's progression and like through what they're doing, but the events of what happened are great. Like, for instance, uh, after the third episode, I want to say like Kubo completely does not know where the fuck either of them are at, and then somehow in the middle of the fourth episode finds the vill- Eden, and I'm like, well, to be fair, he. <laughs> so I no okay, we'll pause because I thought. I'm, I'm finna go with my spell with this as well because so I thought that was a little weird as well because they never explained how the hell they found Eden until that moment you, you're talking about right now with Kubo. I'm, and I'm speaking on Fine and um um and Momo as well because they just, they, they, they do a montage where they're just traveling through the snow and shit. They fall asleep. Next episode, they wake up in quote unquote Eden. And I'm like... Well, Alicia yeah. Alicia said they found... They found... Eden. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Well, Eden well, found they found them, them but, but they had to be heading in the right direction, direction is what yeah. I'm saying. And I'm just like, they didn't say... 
you know, what direction they was going. They didn't it's say just, they had a general idea of you, where the hell Eden was. All you get is a postcard. <laughs> all we get is a postcard, and we find the end. We finally found out, which they could have explained a lot earlier, in my opinion, that on the back, back of the postcard, there's supposedly a map to Eden. And oh, yeah, we, we don't find that out until that scene where we are referring to where Kubo is talking to some people. And then one of his um, military guys come up like, oh, yeah, that's that's the city of such and such. Everybody knows that. Everybody doesn't fucking know that. What do you mean? <laughs> you all like, y'all ain't out here shooting vampires over there, are you? No. Know? <laughs> Look about it here. Like, what do you mean everybody knows that? Any scientist could tell you that. I'm like, all right, guy. Okay. But yeah, I, I just, because I sure thought that was weird. Because I was like, they didn't, Fina and Momo didn't say anything about which direction they was heading or if they had any type of clue of where the hell Eden even was. It's just, let's go find Eden. Okay. Do we have a lead? Nope. Let's, let's just go find Eden. That's it. It's all they said. But apparently the postcard had a map on it, which I think they could explain a lot better yeah, a lot of, than what they did. Definitely. Um, Another thing, another thing um, that was, uh, this is something I wanted to ask just like in general. Uh, if mm-hmm. this got a season two, would you watch it? Now? Like after the, all the events that just happened, would I still watch it? Like after the end of the show, knowing which, would you watch it? Would you be interested in a season two? Um, while I, might only, to- I okay. might only watch it just out of curiosity of what the hell could they possibly do with the season well, two. Okay, for me, I was going to say uh, I would still watch it simply because I would be interested to see. Because at the end of the show, it seems like Momo was able to establish her Eden. I don't know if she's the mm-hmm. same age or older. It looked like she was older because it seemed like she was taller. Uh, that it's, it, I would assume that the world war with the vampires and the humans is still going on. And maybe the fa- maybe it's like, oh, they're coming to destroy... Uh, like Momo's Eden, because like the thing yeah. is, all the people that knew she was a good person, at least like on the side of the vampires, are dead. Like Allegro, gone. Mm-hmm. Fine is gone, gone, and all the other vampires, all they know is like, oh, the, our queen and our prince died after yeah. this human got involved. After, yeah, so exactly. So, I'll be I, like I said, I'll be interested. I will watch it just because I'll be interested to see what 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 in the world could they possibly do. With the season two, so I would watch it. Yes, okay. Um, that is my that is my short answer. Okay. Um, um, but we've been talking about this a lot, and I want to get your opinions on it. We already mentioned it and stuff like that. The series is only five episodes. Do you think they could have did a better job with it being five episodes if the episodes were longer, or do you think that the series should just been more episodes in general? So. Uh, I'm a. I'm not gonna. Uh, uh, this is not a question answering a question, but um, Marvel. I'm gonna use an example. Marvel has six episode seasons for their uh, Disney Plus series. Correct. Regardless of how, and they're all, each an hour long, um, and they're able to fit in a decent amount of story and stuff in it but by, uh, it's always by like the fifth or sixth episode that you're like yeah. what the fuck it's is going, going on? on like why is this yeah. now degrading in quality so i would have said more i still would have probably said more episodes um now yeah. granted because the thing is if they had longer episodes i feel like they would have tried to flesh the world out more and because uh, i feel like a lot of the, the fact that like a lot of the episodes feel like they go by so fast because they're not fleshing out the world they're not world i agree um, and I feel like with, just, I, with simply because they didn't have enough time. Yeah, it, right, yeah, and I and I don't, you know, and I no fault to the writers or directors. I'm pretty sure they 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 didn't decide the time length. I hope yeah. I would think so. Um, I, I I would I would think that if they had longer hours, that would be the thing that they were focused on for the first couple of episodes. But by the end, by the last two, I still feel like we'd be like, this is has the speed of ten jets. Like, what can we slow down? You know, um, so I, 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 so I, I'm inclined to say still more episodes. I'm not sure what the number would be if they had an hour long, but I feel like, uh, based on what we got, I feel like they knew what they wanted to tell. I knew and they knew where it was going. I feel like they could have done this within like 10 if they, if they were 30 minutes and if they were an hour, maybe seven or eight. I, I, me personally, um, I, I I do agree with you. Um, and more episodes would have been nice for this series, but if they were going to keep it to a small number, um, no episode count for this series, 
I think that the time of the episode should have been have a lot more. I mean, more I, of a lot longer than twenty five minutes an episode. I, I think I agree. they probably should have did forty five minutes to an hour. I, I I do agree with that. I do want to say that I do agree. But my only thing is like I think that based on other examples such as like Marvel shows, that Correct. if they still only had five episodes, they were each an hour long. I don't think it would have been enough to iron out all the problems that this show had because it still had a decent amount of issues. I just so I feel like more episodes probably would have been better than longer. But I do think longer, okay. it would have benefited greatly from more time. Though. No, you know, 100%. I think it definitely would have benefited from... Because when, when I realized that the series was only five episodes, I was like, well, why is this... Why is the episode only like yeah, like I thought, five minutes long? I, I, I thought that was kind of weird. When we, because did, of, when we decided uh, to do this special episode, and I saw that, I'm like, okay, so there's a second core coming, right? And it was like, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is it like this is what you got and i was and i, I did think that was weird because i was like okay if you only if you're gonna tell a story in five episodes at least let those episodes be a little bit more lengthy than just a regular a standard you know episode you know what i mean so i just definitely a longer episode is and it and as well more episodes in general definitely would have helped out this the story of this series 100 mm-hmm. percent. yep that is a fact um S- specifically with the world building because we didn't get enough of that um, that's, I really don't think I have anything else. It was kind of it for me. So I have like, I got a few questions, but I'm not really probably going to go through all of them. I'm just going to hit some of my, um, my major questions that I wanted to ask real quick. So what do you think about the action scenes in this series? Uh, it's weird. I didn't have a problem with them really. Um, I mean, it wasn't a lot of close quarters combat until like, I want to say maybe around the end. And that was still mm-hmm. done very well, but I thought the way they presented how, you know, uh, vampires fight by, like, moving at high speed, flying in, um, attacking their enemy, like, catching them off guard with how fast they move. Um, I thought they did a good job with that, and I thought they did a good job with, like, humans have to use tools as well as, like, tools to basically fight the vampires, such as, like, the UV lights they have and, the gu- and you know, the guns. And so, the like, guns the stuff. I agree with that. Um, you know, then why did you mention that? You know, another part of the world building could have been like, are they? They could have explained more, like, are they using special bullets and stuff like that? You know, also I mean, what's like so one, special about this light that they're using? You know, what's different about it than regular sunlight? I mean, uh, I well, no, probably I think it was UV. I don't know. Uh, they, they didn't explain. They, did, we just they know really it didn't explain. Light. Again, there's holes you as a viewer have to fill in, which I think is I, I think yeah. that's bad in any type of media. Um, but I will say, uh, a, a piggybacking off that, another thing they, I would have loved for them to explain is the uh, drug that helps the vampires. Yeah, because they, they definitely didn't explain that. Like, how, how did the vampires even come up with this drug? What was the main reason they decided to start using this drug? Um, they kind of alluded to it because you know, when the general mentioned that you know, if the vampires has to uh, have to sort to using these type of tactics, then you know, we got them on the ropes. Um, was that truly the case? Did did they have the vampires on the ropes? You know, that's something they you know really didn't go fully you know deep into. I mean, most of the time it seemed, but, um, most of the time it did seem like they were only used as like last ditch efforts. But still, last, like last ditch I would have loved yeah. to have known how the fuck these came about and how they like are these generally always being made? Or are they made on request? Like because it, it, there weren't that many of them, but they seem to be well they, pro- they seem to be well known enough. Or we are used enough for humans to fully be uh, like aware of that being a possibility of something that they had. So correct. And then I got a few questions that's also kind of wrapped into one. So one, I, I will say this: one of the things I think, like you said, was like a missed opportunity that they didn't get to really expand upon because they didn't have enough time. Was the Council of Elders or the Vampire Council that they got in their city and whatnot in the Vampire City? I think that was definitely a missed opportunity. And more world building they could have expanded expanded upon, but just you know, due to time constraint, that was just something they couldn't do. But as far as so, Fine, I got a question about Fine. So Fine, you know, we saw her main reason she really didn't want to drink blood because there was a moment where you know she fell in love with Arya and stuff like that, and Arya died. But through the flashbacks, we couldn't really see if Arya died to like. Fine because it was it was there oh, was a no, lot of different I, flashbacks I'm where Fine sh- was like trying to bite Arya, but then at the same time there was more flashbacks where Arya was riddled with bullets and stuff like that. So I'm I I'm pr- and then there was even a moment where Allegro mentions that um 
you know, you shouldn't try and fall, you know, be with this human. The last one you was with betrayed you and stuff like that. So I guess my question is, I don't think they did a good job of relaying what Arya really meant to Fine and portraying what whether them? she really did betray her or was it did Arya give up her life so, for Fine? So I say this. I think Arya may have done something where, like, it seemed like Arya was uh, a believer of the fact that, like, humans and vampires could coexist, right? So she probably did something in the way that was like, hey, I have proof that vampires and us can exist together. It was, like, Fine or whatever. Probably told about it, which gave them, like, the coordinate, of, which probably gave whatever human military people were like, oh, y'all can, you got a vampire here. Oh. <laughs> it's up. It's up. It, it's up. Like, um, so I don't think it was necessarily intentional. She just seemed to be like a, the, in the flashbacks I remember seeing, it just seemed like that girl was very optimistic. And I think though, at the end, she realized her mistake and she took bullets for, uh, Fine. And I think last time she made, and I, and also in terms of like feeding on people, I think, uh, Arya might have been willingly giving Fine her blood. Um, Maybe. in some way, shape or form. But Fine, after Arya's death was like, I can't. I can't harm humans. I can't do this anymore. And so, and and then another question I have. So they, you know, they all they mentioned that if, you know vampires don't drink blood, they go crazy. And we started seeing that with Fine as well. But Fine was also sick. But they never explained was that due to her because she did not drink blood. Like, do vampires also have to drink blood to, to you know keep their health up? I th- that was I would, something that they never really I would explained as well. I would assume so because I believe it's based on like how humans have to eat to not feel shitty like if you've yeah. ever been starving you you either get like you either start feeling sick or you become hangry and so like i think it's like that i think it's a two-pronged thing like vampires if they don't drink blood they will eventually get so hungry that they'll go berserk and try and like kill the the first human they come in contact with as well as their condition will deteriorate um, that's usually how it is yeah. in most vampire media. Again, they don't do a lot of world building with it. Vampires are a known concept, so they don't necessarily have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. But these vampires were different than your run of the the mill one. So it would have been nice to get some background, at least on how they how they operate in a way. Okay. Then I got three last questions here. Then we can wrap this all up. Um, one, did you do you think after the events of finding out who Arya is and she's so similar to? In you know visuals and face and likeness to Momo and whatnot. That she could. We think the general it? is Momo's adoptive mother. Oh, uh, uh, I'm inclined to say no, only because you're inclined to say no, only because it did not seem like Arya had any love interests outside of Fine, and there are no flashbacks of. But that I mean, you couldn't have got pregnant being though. A child. Uh, because Fine was around Arya like a lot, and so I feel like she would have saw a baby. At yeah, some but point. a lot doesn't necessarily incline that she was always around. Arya I don't know. I mean, you're you're, you're not wasn't the you're, case. you're not wrong. You're not wrong at <laughs> all, sir, at all. But I'm just saying, based on what they showed me, I cannot 100 percent support that theory. Um, of course. Now, no, now, I know you can't 100% support be, what I'm asking. Do you think that might have been the case? Though? I don't think because, so. Now, re- because now, Arya relative, looks, yeah. basically, she looks like Momo's mother. I mean, she there's, a, like lot that, of, that lady there's a lot of animes where people look, where, where characters look like certain people and they're not related at all. Uh, we we so, not even go to that rabbit hole, but... I, I, okay. but, but I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm just only bringing that up because as to say, like, it, that, that does not necessarily mean that's the case. So... A relation there could be that could be like her great aunt or some shit i don't know but that i don't think that's her mom i don't think that's her mom i think the general okay. pretty sure the general is her mother oh okay by okay. blood right. by, by blood that's what you think i think okay. it's i All think right. it's okay we never we because we never get to see what the general looks like as a young woman so it, it, we have no idea if she looked like me that. but the general don't necessarily look like she don't this necess- momo don't necessarily have any resemblance to her mother i mean who was quote unquote the general i mean no, just general. i mean there's some there's only so much drawing you can do with a five episode now i'm joking uh okay but there's you say that but then they make Arya look like an older version of momo though did they make her look like i don't well see the thing is uh 
age can change someone drastically in certain cases. So yes, it can. But I mean, and, and she's not that far off looking from her. It's just that her face is not as round, which could be the thing. Is like she's not as young though. You could you could draw that line, that conclusion. I, I, I and her guess. hair color is different, but that could be her from her dad that we never get to see because they didn't put him in it. So I mean, I, I I won't say that it's not a possibility, but I just based on what they showed me of Arya, I, I I'm inclined to think not. Also, it seemed like that was a long time ago because I am assuming mm-hmm. that because Fina was a child, and I don't know. Again, they don't very well explain how vampires fucking work in this world. So I don't know if vampire childhood is longer than, you know, like, how old is Fine really? Yeah. Because that could determine a lot. Because that could. Cause, okay. Because if we knew Fine's age, that could be Arya's, that could be uh, Momo's grandma. For all we know. Uh, well, yeah, and to the same extent. So I guess a better question would be, do you think that Arya was somewhat related yes, to I'm, I, Momo? Yes, I you said, think you have already if you, alluded to. If you said that, I would have been, been like, yeah, 100%. But I don't think that's okay. her mom. Simply just okay. because I don't feel like, based on what the flashbacks that we showed, I don't think it was lined up. Also, if that was uh, if Arya was the general's mother, that would explain why the general is so fucking uh, hard on Momo, and two, yeah. why uh, her uncle thinks that a, a relationship with a vampire could have worked in the first place because their mom was out here. Mom tried. Yeah, her mom. Yeah. Their mom was out here taking care of vampire kids or something like so. Yeah, I've been well. Yeah. That's a, that's a good thought. That's a good thought. Um, so my second to last question here. Um, in your opinion, who do you think the antagonist of the series was? Me personally, I think it was merely just a mixture of the was, human forces and the vampire yeah, it forces. It was the world, if anything. Um, it was the world. I think the world set it up. Like, uh, they were against... They were... The, Fine and Momo were working against the people who were... The, the, the crazy world that they were in that put vampires and humans against each other. Um, I don't think like it was any one person. I think it was just the circumstance. Correct. Yeah, the, basically, the, the the antagonist was the circumstances that it was going against. Is basically what you're trying mm-hmm. to say. Okay, I, I can get down with and that. Alicia <laughs> and Alicia. <laughs> oh, man, Momo should have Momo should have died. Honestly, like if there was any point for the plot armor to disappear, it was the that girl had a gun to her face. If anybody should have died. It was really Fine a long time ago, a long time ago, because she got shot multiple times. And like one of the second episodes, she got shot in the neck with an arrow, like dead in the neck. And I'm like, yo, like, is she okay? Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't understand her survivability either. But like at least she got hit. Momo only got hit maybe like two times on this whole show, and she got shot at a lot. A lot. <laughs> That she did. And for my last question that I have have here for today, then we go on to our rating for this series. Um, You know my thing about climaxes. They can be your saving grace of your movies slash series if the the filler, if you will, wasn't enough. That that you know the climax of your your movie and series can help help you out a lot. Okay. Do you do you like the way that this series ended? Do you agree with how Fine went out? It was messy. But I don't think I don't think it was bad. It was messy though. I don't think it was bad. Um, I think I think that was the way it was gonna go anyway. Fine was shown throughout the series to be have like a little suicidal tendencies, and I think her sacrificing herself to make sure Momo survived made sense. Now her turning back into a normal vampire is weird because I could have sworn that they all seemed to die in that monstrous state. But hey, special character plot armor. I guess that you got got to happen some way. We can't let the girl yeah. die a monster. Also, I'd, I'd like to add like the a uh, Momo got one final confrontation with her mother, mm-hmm. and it was symbolic of her like I'm leaving. I do. I'm going to actively choose not to be in this crazy world that you seem to perpetuate. Correct. Shoot me if you got uh, to. I, I thought I'm that glad, was uh, good. I I'm glad really Momo's good. mother decided not to shoot her. Because that would have been fucked up if she would have shot her. It would have been fucked up, but also I would have been like, oh. <laughs> oh uh, this was a five. So that's, so that's how you feel. This was a five episode series that wanted to do something with the ending that I did not see coming. Because I was, I, <laughs> I would have been thoroughly been like, oh, my, a shock factor. And it wouldn't, and I won't say that would, it would not have made sense because her mom, like I said before, she has shown, well, her whole thing was mm-hmm. like, 
I care more about my position than I do my daughter. But I guess at the end, that little thing was like not really as much. Yes, as and, I, and, I'm, so. and I'm glad you brought that up because I think that does play a major role in the end of the series. Because like you said, it, it shows you how much from what we got to see in the beginning, how she cared more for her, her work, like you said. But then in this last split moment, she finally decided to care for her daughter more. But also, it also helps out the climbers because I thought they they missed a they they missed a mark where um where um Fine and Momo was having their last words with each other right in the little cave, and Fine asks Momo to sing for her one last time, and Momo doesn't fucking do it. That pissed me off. I thought she did. She it's just did that not. they played the credits or whatever. Um, before she's yeah no because well it's she didn't sing in that moment because she moved her body after that part. And then right before the credits roll, she she does sing, and then credits roll, and then after the credits, we see her. We, her I, I don't recall it. You so. you're gonna have to go back and watch right before the credits, like legitimately right before the credits. I, there's a mark. Are you so? Are you saying as she's walking away from her mother, she's so, singing? No, no, no. So saying? she so she's carrying Finney's body, walking away from her mother. This is the weirdest shit right now. So if you're still watching, this is basically the ending. And if you have not watched, you should probably go watch the show. Because I mean, I'm not. If you've been here this long. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, eh, it, I digress because I feel like I'm not. I might not explain this 100. percent But Fine, uh, Momo takes Fine's body, carries it across the ice, confronts her mom, continues to walk. She then places her body some fucking where it's never explained where. Because then, um, in a field of flowers. Uh, and the sun, and like the sun is up in whatever location this is. She sets her down. She takes like one final look at her. She breathes in, and then she makes like the the physical like she makes a physical movement to so that she sings or cries, one of the two, and then credits roll, and then and then it shows her eating. See, okay, because I'm I'm remembering this completely different, and I'm and I have no recollection this is, of this because this is exactly why. Basically, right what before, you're descri- hold on, pause, because basically what you're describing now is literally what kind of sort of happened at the when they were in the cave because they was in that field of flowers inside the cave. Yes, I don't but know there was flowers in this cave. But anyways, but before but, that, and then she had the sunlight coming down on her face because, and then also because the credits rolled. But then after the credits rolled. What well, was it a credits roll or was it a fade to black when before it was a fade she to bl- met her mother? It was a fade to black before I can't her mom. It was a fade to black when before she met her mother. Okay, because I know you know she was in that field of flowers. It was a fade to black, and then she met her mother, and then she walked off. Now I don't you after don't she walked the, off. Well, I don't I don't recall Momo setting Fine down or nothing. I recall her walking off into the the fucking. I the boy. Could, I could be in mixing roll roll we, credits. We both could, and then we come back and we see Fine in some unknown location with vampires we, and humans. We together. could be both mixing two things, but she did. She didn't. We didn't get to hear her sing, but she did sing. I do remember her making the physical motion to like sing, and I believe that was either that was either it could have happened in the cave or B she carried. Fine's body somewhere else. I did. I pulled, I'm, I'm, well, I'm gonna say this. I don't recall that happening. If it happened, it definitely didn't happen in the cave, which I expected it to happen. But if it did, I just don't remember. But regardless, I still think that was a missed opportunity for her to sing to her one last time in that cave. But by all no, means, no, I agree. That, that was that. They ran. Out, they ran out of singing budget. That's. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, but they only had. They only but had. Like I, said, I, I, but I do not. I definitely do not recall her placing Fine down after she walked away from her mother. Could have sworn that's what happened. I did. I, I did a skim through before we started recording, and I could have sworn that's what happened. <laughs> if I am wrong, I'm wrong. I do apologize, and this is why I said you probably want to watch it because I'm not sure if I'm 100 percent explaining this correct. But um. She, I believe she did sing. We just didn't get to hear, it, which I do still do agree. That's a waste of opportunity, at least as a viewer. Yes, because um, I, I, I felt like they just would have, you know, sent that home. Yeah, like just just send her on off peacefully. Mm-hmm. But, but that that was all the um, questions that I really had to ask. And now we're just gonna go ahead and rate this series. So we're all five episodes, really, episodes one through five. Are we going through it individually? Because I didn't think. No, not okay, individually. Oh, thank God. Because I'm talking I was, together as. <laughs> I was about to be like, oh. <laughs> together as a collective, what do you give? What rating do you give Vampire in the Garden? <laughs> you know how I say like the bubble movie? I could see someone uh, someone arguing for a seven. And I could yeah. see, and I, I still do think someone could argue for a seven. But to me personally, it was at, at the highest it would ever get is a six. The highest this will ever get is a seven for me. 
Um, reason being is just this restraint on time. They did a great job, though, honestly, with the restraint on time. But you can only do so much with five episodes, and th- and yes. expect me to feel like it was really good. Like, would I recommend this to someone? Probably, but it's just, I wouldn't go out of my like you know an eight, nine, or a ten is something I go out of my way to recommend. This is like yeah. This is like if someone isn't watching anything and they want like a quick, legitimately like a quick, straight, a quick little something, something to watch. This is something I would point. I would recommend. This is something I would recommend because the the animation's great. Uh, the storyline, while having holes, is it you can follow. Uh, that you can't. That, yeah. You can follow. That, and your, that is, like I said, that is one thing that I did at least enjoy about the story. Even your, though that the pace was fast, it never felt like I didn't know what, what was, going was going on. Right? on really. Um, so and and, and uh-huh. the characters, you the main characters, which is arguably the most important. You care. You care about what happens to them enough to watch the series, right? Yeah. So. Uh, I think the highest this could get is a seven. Personally, I think for me it's a six, and it's only because of the stuff that it's missing. Because I am, as much as I'm interested in the characters, I tell this um mm-hmm. for for the pod, for the people listening. Um, Ace knows. Well, you probably uh, I mentioned it before, but I'm like a DM for a group of a uh, group of me and Ace's friends. Uh, and I tell them usually, and usually when I tell like the tell them to make their character, I tell them about the world. Like the world, the the building of the world, because nothing is created from a vacuum. Your world has just as much influence <laughs> on you as like your parents and your friends. Like that, like where you grew Correct. up is a thing. And I feel like the fact that we don't get to learn a lot about like what makes vampires tick or the why the world is an internal winter is is crazy. Because I feel like that that would yeah. help us understand a lot more than what we got. Because I feel like a, in a lot of cases we got surface level on a lot of things. And I feel like if you got if they get if they had more time to flesh out the world and stuff, we would have it, it could have been a great series. This could have been easily yeah. an eight. I feel like if they uh, had more time, I, I agree. It's like you said, for everything that you just said, it was at least a six. Um, one of the main things that they missed on the mark, in my opinion, was like like you are said this many times before was the world building, but they really just didn't have enough time for the world building, especially because like the conflict between the humans and vampires. What was it about the conflict in the human and vampires? Like, what made them really fight each other? Because all they told us was that a plague came, vampires was here, and now we got a the rest. The last bit of humanity was held up in the city, and we're trying to fight for our lives, basically. Yeah, because like, what about it that that when the vampires came along, that really made the conflict, you know, start? Like, because the vampires fear? just came out of nowhere. Yeah, was I, it just I was, yeah. like, was, it the was it the fear from the humans? Was it the fear from the like of the vampires that like being different from the humans and stuff like that? You know, like what was, was it, it specifically I mean, could, about the conflict? Was it the 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 fact that vampires thirsted? Because it's it, it, what's interesting to me is like. Um, with that specifically, it, uh, the vampires seem to be more reactive in certain ways of like, and the yeah. humans seem proactive. Like they're hunt, they're actively hunting vampires. While vampires are like, damn it, they keep killing us. We need to attack this. We need to teach them a lesson to attack their city. So I'm just like, it seems yeah. like vampires understand that there could be a way to coexist with them, but humans are like, fuck that, hell no. So I'm like, what, what, why, what happened? Did was it always like this? Was this always the stance? Or is this something completely different? So, like I said, like the, if they had more time, this could have easily been better and probably would have been deserving of a seven. But personally, to me, it's yeah. a six. Something because of, it's then, just missing too much. And then I know they didn't have a lot of time, but I think it, it would have helped them out a lot if they gave us like a time frame of how long they've been fighting this war. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would help us out a lot because one of the things that I did find odd was that the humans didn't. So Momo, there was a scene where Momo and Fina were in the castle, and Fina was like, "Did you know that humans just you know made music basically?" And Momo was like, "No, you know how long has it the been yeah. since we're fighting that, this war that humans has forgot that humans made music? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like so, I think even even if they didn't really go too deep into it, they could at least gave us like a time frame of how long they've been doing this fight. You know what I mean? So it's just. A lot of missed opportunities definitely due to the fact that they really just did not have enough time, honestly, because there's not a lot you can do with five episodes. But I will agree with you, though, that in the time that they did have, they did a good job of telling a story and, you know, going from A to B at that because they they had a story. This is it. This is Fini. This is Momo. Here's why they came together. Here's what they're going to find. They're going to find Eden because they want to live in a you know, world full of where humans and vampires can't live together. Because one, because Fine is tired of living 
to the constraints of being a vampire and all the rules that they're trying to throw on her. And also because, you know, she fell in love with Arya at one point. And then Momo, she's tired of living under the rules and constraints of being a human and being stuck in this city. And also presumably her mother, because that's, you know, she slapped the shit out of her. <laughs> but, <laughs> and so, you know, we're now we're coming together to go find Eden because, you know, why not? But, uh, they did do good. I think they did a, enough job, a good job at, at explaining what they could. Yeah, that's what, that's did. exactly why I feel like this is like a high six, potentially a seven. Like if someone told me this was a seven, I could one hundred percent see all the reasons and even agree with some. It's just for me, this is like slightly above average because yeah. of the fact that like they were able to pull such a decently compelling story from our main characters. Uh, with the those times they had, which is very impressive. It's just that they, they, I feel like they could have done more, and also the pacing at their a certain point really <laughs> just is bad. It's not good. It's but fast pacing is not it. Like slow pacing is shitty. Fast pacing is a little bit less, but it does it doesn't make it good though. Like just because you may, it speed it up and are still able to like coherently tell a story does not make it good. Does not make it by yeah. any means great. <laughs> because as we already said, there's a lot of plot holes in said story that they had to deal with because they because of the time constraint mm-hmm. that they had. So it's, it's sad to see. Um, it's, I'll, it's, I'll be interested to find out what was the reason behind doing it a five episode series and it. It, and why they only decided to do 25 minute episode five minutes but because if you're gonna like i said in my opinion if you're gonna only do five episodes at least make the episodes a little bit All more right, than yeah. 25 minutes like 45 minutes you know, to give them a little bit more of a breathing room to work with instead of just regular 25 minute episodes like we, we're already on the episode constraint as it is we don't have to be on we shouldn't be on a time constraint as well exactly. for these episodes exactly. so um, that, that, that's definitely the the killer of the series, if you will. The the limited amount of episodes that they had, and also the limited amount of time in each episode that they had, yeah. definitely did not help this series at all. Um, but other than that, um, that's pretty much all I had. So me and McMillan, you know, we both got a rating of six. But like you said, we definitely could see somebody talking this up to a seven. I wouldn't be mad if somebody said they had this you know series at a seven now if we're going up to eight and nines especially a ten then you know i gotta come talk to you because what about this show made you think this was a 10 <laughs> out of 10 but nonetheless i can definitely see people talking uh, this up to a seven yeah. maybe even an eight if you gave me a good enough reason why this should be at least an eight i could probably work with you but like i said but for me like i said no higher than a seven honestly mm-hmm. um, but it was a decent series though yeah so, with all that being said, guys, uh, appreciate you for watching and slash listening. Um, if you want to stay up to date with all things about the council, as always, follow us on our social media, uh, at Gurren Otaku's on Twitter, and at Gurren Otaku Council on Facebook and Instagram. Um, please, uh, if you've watched this beforehand, uh, watch the series. I still think <laughs> it's, like, a good watch um, when, if you have, like, nothing else. Like, yes. if you just want to turn on the background, it's good. The dub is... The dub is what I watched it in. I don't know if you did the same. I watched it in the dub. Yeah, well. dub, dub was very serviceable. I think God, they did a they, good oh job. Oh, gosh. That was the question I had to ask you at the beginning of this episode. Oh, if we watched it. Did you watch it in sub or dub? Okay, well, there we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dub, the dub was pretty good, so I, I can just assume that the sub was also pretty, uh, very serviceable. Um, but if you didn't watch it, yeah, I would still recommend doing it. Just, you know, pick a, uh, I wouldn't even say pick a day. Just when you're like, damn, I ain't got nothing to do. I don't got nothing yeah. to watch. Throw it on. Um, yeah, good or not. Like, yeah. It's and if bad. you have watched it, please let us know what you thought about it. Cause I would like to see if anybody else saw, saw the shit I was talking about. Uh, and what characters stood out to you. Um, with all that being said, put that uh, Alicia phrase on a shirt. Yeah. That, that, that that's put all her on say. a shirt. Okay. Give her a series. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I really didn't know. I, I didn't. I, I didn't hear her say that line at all. That shit. That line was tough to tell. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but with all that being said, guys, uh, as always, thank you for watching. Um, the Guru, this is the Guru Talk Council saying, "Meeting adjourned. Signing off. Have a wonderful day. Peace." <laughs>